But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built. Yet give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy. Lord, my God, hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. May your eyes be open toward this temple night and day, this place of which you said, my name shall be there, so that you will hear the prayer your servant prays towards this place. Hear the supplication of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. Solomon is talking about the temple for worship. But what if this house of assembly could resonate with the spirit of prayer? This morning, my meditation will take the form of an extended prayer that we are asking the nation to pray with us. Lord our God, we come at the beginning of this year to give you thanks for all the many blessings we have enjoyed. You have showered us with so much. We are grateful for the victories won and strength in the midst of the struggle. Lord, only by your grace have we come this far. We pray for every member of this honorable house, for Hubert, our prime minister, for Philip, the leader of the opposition, for all the members of the cabinet. May the decisions made here take our country to higher heights. We ask your comfort for those who have lost loved ones last year and already in this year. We pray that their souls will be resting in peace. Lord Jesus, we pray that this will be a wonderful new year. Fill it with faith moments when your Holy Spirit enables us to worship in spirit and in truth. Jesus, our shepherd, help us to find green pastures and still waters. Lead us, Lord, in the paths of righteousness and restore our souls. God, our provider, give jobs to those who are unemployed or underemployed. Help us, Lord, to use our gifts and talents to your honor and glory and to build up the kingdom of God. God, our healer, we pray for good health this year and recovery from all sickness. Teach us how to eat more nutritiously, drinking water frequently, and getting adequate rest and exercise. Lord Jesus, bless our youth and children and protect them from all harm and danger. Bring them to a saving faith that guides their lives according to your perfect plan. Lord our God, touch the hearts of every adult to obey your commands and set godly examples. May every child have loving parents, wise teachers, and trustworthy mentors, counselors, and role models. We pray for every home to be a haven of peace and for godly relationships. Lord, remove all addiction, abuse, and domestic violence from all of our homes. We pray that this will be our best year ever, drawing closer to you and delighting your heart. We pray all these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus and pray our family prayer as a sign of our unity. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed Hallow be thy name, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Grant Simonette, Desmond Bannister, <coughs> Remwood Wells, Jeffrey Lloyd, Dr. Dwayne Sand, Marvin Dane, Frankie Campbell, Dionisio Diagula, Michael Pintard, Darren Henfield, Ramal Ferreira, Manisha Rose, Renzel Rose, Alfred Justin, Philip Davis, Juan Miller, Patricia Parker Exeter, Iron Lewis, Carlton Boleg, James Aubrey, Travis Robinson, Adrian Gibson, Donald Saunders, Frederick McElkine, Hank Johnson, Mark Hume, Michael Folk, Miriam Reffi Emanuel, Rick Reese Shipman, Ruben Ramey, Ricky Mackey, Shannon R. Cartwright, Connell Ferguson, Clarence Martin, Christo Ford, Jessica Cooper. Good morning, honorable members. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you back to this honorable place on the first sitting of the new year following which I trust 
was a wonderful, festive Christmas holiday season. And I'd say by the look on your faces and the body movement, you are ready. And like our member from Baintown usually says, fired up and ready to go. Full of zeal in doing the people's business. I also want to reiterate my commitment to this honorable members as your presiding officer to preside with decorum, integrity, and impartiality. In, in conjunction with the executive branch and with the concurrence of the opposition, I will continue my initiative to move the institution forward. I assure you that all of my efforts would be purely in the interest of modernizing this parliament and to the deepening of the democracy in our nation. Today, as we commence this year's first meeting, we will, of course, seek God's guidance in our annual parliamentary trade service. It is always good to seek the counsel from the Almighty before commencing anything worthwhile. The scripture says, all powers that are ordained are ordained of God. For those of us who embrace this injunction, let us move forward in earnest with the people's business. Public service is the highest form of service we can render to our country. We should approach it with all sincerity, seriousness, and sobriety. We are also to be reminded that constitutionally, the parliament is part of a structure where there are three arms of government. 2018, while an, an, an eventful year for parliament was not without its trials and tribulations, but I'm looking forward to an even more eventful year in 2019. I expect lively debates, provocative exchanges, and respectful intentions. One improvement that I would especially like to see is the continued growth of the camaraderie among members. And the second improvement that I am hopeful for in 2019 will be the commencement of the Rules and Business Committee of this Parliament with the review, revision, and upgrade of our parliamentary rules of procedure. I've come to realize that the whole, a whole lot of Bahamians follow the parliamentary channel, and they follow us faithfully. Many people, especially the young people and the fatherless, look up to us for the high standards that parliament should produce in our behavior and conduct. We would do good to be mindful of this in our exchanges across the floor. Let us be courteous in our disagreements. None of us is without fault. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. In recognition of this, our, our humanity, we pray and seek God's grace at the beginning of each sitting of parliament. And finally, members, there are two parties that are represented in this honorable house. One party has been given the mandate to govern, and the opposition is always the alternative to the governing party. As leaders, we must learn to eat what we serve. And as members of the governing party, we will do good to remember that whatever we do, in government, we should be prepared to absorb in opposition. Finally, honorable members, God has given us a wonderful opportunity to make great advances in our deepening of our democracy. 
let us not put off for tomorrow what we can do today. I want to wish all of you a most exciting, enriching, and productive year. God bless this parliament and the people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Thank you. At this time, I would like, before we proceed to the order of business, to table the Auditor General's report that I received this morning. This, this report is a special investigation into the honoraria and stipend within the Department of Education. That is the first report, and it is for the period July 1st, 2014 through February 28, 2018. The second report is a in special investigation, also into the honorary and stipend. Actually, this appears to be a duplication, so there are two copies. But um, while I'm on that subject, because of reports that I've seen in the newspaper yesterday and again today, um, I wish to address this matter. And while this matter is not, in my estimation, a shattering, it is serious and deserving of an explanation. As I indicated, honorable members, you may have seen a story in the newspaper concerning an audit done by the Auditor General uh, that apparently was not tabled in a timely fashion. According to our ongoing investigation, this report was indeed sent to the Parliament by the Auditor General on the 13th of September, 2018. The Auditor General has also been kind enough to supply us with a log indicating that this report was received at the receptionist's desk by and signed for by the receptionist. The report never reached the acting clerk of the parliament and never reached the speaker's desk. However, by some circumstance, this report found its way to the Tribune newspaper. And that is most unusual and most unacceptable. I wish to assure honorable members that the parliament has already taken steps to avoid any such delay in future. We have spoken with the Auditor General and agreed on a change in the protocol of how future reports will be handled. One issue that we have resolved is that whenever there is an audit report, we are requesting of the Auditor General to supply this parliament with a minimum of 60 copies of that report so that all members of the Honorable House of Assembly and senators are able to receive their entitlement which is an entitlement to every document table in this, in this parliament. As this investigation is ongoing, I wish to make no further statement on this matter. At this time, I, I table the report, the special investigation into the honorary and stipend within the Department of Education 
for the period July 1st, 2014 to February 28, 2018. Introduction and swearing in of new members. Laying of documents by ministers. Statements and communication by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Bamboo Town. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is good to rise again once in this, in this place, once again in this new year. And we thank you. I thank you on behalf of all members for the wonderful statement that you gave today, encouraging us as to what ought to take place going forward in this new year, the camaraderie. And obviously this honorable place is also a coliseum where members of parliament engage in debates. Gladiators in the arena of politics. And Mr. Speaker, we will be vigorous in defending our positions as obviously the other side will do so as well. But we accept your admonition to keep the camaraderie that has existed among members down through this honorable place. And so, Mr. Speaker, we, as you would have spoken to, to the issue of us seeking God's guidance, we are a people who are known as the people of God. And in that vein, Mr. Speaker, we're going to continue with the honorable tradition of having that church service to ask God's blessings on our endeavors going forward. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I will move that this honorable house suspends until 10 a.m. Wednesday, the 23rd of January, 2019. And as we suspend, Mr. Speaker, we will we have the buses waiting so that we can all go to Wesley Methodist Church on Blue Hill Road so that we can worship our God and seek his divine wisdom so that we may be able to govern so great a people. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I will move that the House suspends. Is it second? Honorable members, it has been moved and seconded that the business of this house suspend to 10 a.m. Wednesday, the 23rd of January, 2019, to enable honorable members and senators to attend the annual church service. As many as are in favor will remain seated. Those who oppose will stand. The business of this house stands suspended until 10 a.m. Wednesday, the 23rd of January, 2019.